Hey, it's Joe Talentino with I Know Jax. This week I have an absolutely fantastic show lined up for you. Now, as usual, we're going to start by visiting a great restaurant. This one's in South Jacks Beach. Then we're going to talk about cocktails, upcoming events, and much more. Last week, I started doing a Facebook Live I Know Jack show from Atlantic Beach Brewing Company. It's one of the newer breweries in town. They do awesome beer, and I love the space. Now, we're going to be there every Friday going forward, and this is how it works. I'm going to be at the brewery at about 6.30 p.m. We're going to go live on the I Know Jack's Facebook page at about 7.00. Now I'm saying about because this is live over the internet, so every now and then things happen and I might be a few minutes late. <laughs> so anyway, at 7 p.m. I'll be live on Facebook. You can watch me and even type in your comments below the video while I'm live. You have to be patient with me though because I'm kind of slow. I'm not a great typist, but I do read all of the comments. Now I will try to respond to your comments on or questions live on the show. Now if you want to, you're welcome to come out and join me at the brewery. I'll be hanging out after the show. There's craft beer or wine for those of you who don't drink beer, and we always have a really good time. So come out and see me if you can, but if not, make sure to check out the Facebook page on Friday and comment. Next, let's check out some seafood at Roy's Restaurant in South Jacks Beach. Today I'm at Roy's in Jacksonville Beach and I'm trying what they call the Classic Four. One corner we've got the Big Eye Tuna with Berblanc soy mustard, pickled ginger and ponzu vegetables. Just opposite that we have the Misayaki Butterfish. That's marinated, comes with this awesome sauce, sizzling soy vinaigrette and blanched bok choy. We have the Hibachi Salmon, it's glazed in teriyaki, comes with the citrus ponzu and pickled namasu vegetables. We have the macadamia crutz of mahi-mahi. That's got poached potatoes and asparagus. The Lakani Lao is great because it's like a surf and turf roll. You got the wagyu beef torched on top, miso sesame puree inside, fried asparagus, snow crab. So the pansier scallops are special to me because we get them delivered from St. George Banks to the restaurant. The diver picks them up off the boat, hands them to a delivery man that brings them straight to me. I sear them with a little salt, pepper, clarified butter, nice and simple. Serve it with forbidden Chinese black rice. We cook everything from scratch here. I'm very close with all the people I buy everything from. It's like a family more than anything. When you come out to Roy's in Jacksonville Beach, of course you want to try seafood. And this is called Roy's Classic. Four of Roy's best fish dishes all on one plate. Here we've got the Lakani roll, which is a surf and turf sushi. And here we've got the Evi roll. It's also a Hawaiian classic. And to top it off, we've got seared scallops. Gotta have those. And of course, a great glass of red wine to wash it all down. The food there was fantastic. Now, if you haven't been, you really should check it out. They also have a really good happy hour. And speaking of happy hour, next we're going to talk about Bordeaux. I just wanted to let you know that I'm now sending out The Insider every Tuesday. You'll get tips and ideas for cool things to do, plus you'll find out what I'm up to and where we're filming next. That kind of stuff. You can subscribe to The Insider on my website at iknowjacks.com. I always have a great time when I get together with Chris Chislett, our sommelier and wine expert. Chris is usually a British gentleman and always tries to be polite and respectful. But somehow I think I managed to get on his nerves this time though. <laughs> Just check it out. <sighs> Don't start the segment the same way that you always do. Change. It's just like, and this is going to talk about something really cool. Episodes. Really cool, this episode. Really cool. Well, that's I'll how I always what, start my I'll wine tell you what. Oh, you want me you to read? start. Yeah. Hi, I'm Chris Chislett, and on this segment, we're going to do something really kind of cool. I was okay. doing my Joe Talentino, because oh, he always okay. goes like high pitch. Really kind of cool. Gotcha, okay. 
We're going to talk puberty about your. Puberty No, I know. Well, <laughs> speaking of puberty, we're going to talk about your gray sack. All right. Well, so this is know. Chateau Gray Sack. Okay. All right. Can we say gray sack? Oh, with, uh, over and over again, please. Oh, okay. Gray what sack. about Madoc? Madoc. We cannot talk about <laughs> my my doc, your doc. <laughs> Nobody's cannot, doc. Nobody's okay. doc. All right. Okay, cool. This is. Well, oh, you want to start again? No, yes. we're going to keep it going. So this is Chateau Gray, and we're not too much worried about the actual wine. No, we're not. We don't no. really give a because. Yeah. The real important thing here is we're going to talk about Bordeaux. We're going to talk about, I like this role Our reversal grapes. thing. Yeah, we're going to talk about Bordeaux and the five grapes of Bordeaux. Yep. Which there's actually four of them in this bottle. Which we I actually tell you on the Cabernet back. Cabernet Franc. Oh. Merlot. Yeah, you were reading, but don't don't believe that he knows what? this. What? Like, for one second, it says on the back of the label. Go on. Cabernet Franc. But one that's not on there, Malbec. How about that? All right, so start from the beginning. <laughs> what was all five again? Cabernet Franc, Merlot. Pinot. Nope. No. Oh. See? All right. See, you couldn't oh, be me. You could never up. be me. I, no, I could never be you. You know, I remember I'm not I, as tall. Five grapes of Bordeaux. Don't be looking. Don't be trying to read. I know. <laughs> this is actually a second take deal. Like, we never yeah, admit no. to the second takes. But no, we don't is, do second this takes. Is, well, it, <laughs> this is the second take. Uh, five grapes of Bordeaux. That's what we're getting to, buddy boy. Five grapes of Bordeaux. So what if you're it? drinking. I thought you were going to tell oh, me. Oh, no, I don't know. I don't oh, okay. Know. So I always remember this. Uh, a little stupid thing. Uh, CCMMP. It just kind of helped me when I was doing the sommelier training thing. So CCMMP. Uh, it's Cabernet, okay. Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Malbec, and Petit Bordeaux. So CCMMP. Cool. So if you're drinking a red Bordeaux, it's going to be anywhere from normally at least two, okay. all the way up to five of those grapes. Wow. So, so you this make is them all. yeah. So Cabernet, Cabernet Franc, so Merlot, Malbec, for Petit sure. Bordeaux. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, there's very few people just making a hundred percent. I gotta ask about my doc. Good doc. <laughs> my doc. You do have to. Well, ask about my doc. I have to. Right. Well, well, is that a is that it's, a reason? It's just a, sp a specific part of uh, of actual Bordeaux itself. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just a really kind of, a little bit kind of lower uh, in, in the Bordeaux in the Bordeaux south. region. Yeah, normally in Bordeaux, once you start getting like expensive, you start talking about like left bank and right bank. My doc is spent. Margot and yeah, it's getting up there. <laughs> it, the way it works is like if you say a wine's just from Bordeaux. It's only anywhere from ten to fifteen dollars retail. Okay. Say so it's from you know Madoc. I can't remember how much this was. We took the price of it. Yeah. Yes. So we don't I think know. It's like eighteen dollars. I got it as a sample actually, so I don't even know. Okay. It's probably about eighteen. <laughs> You're just guessing. You don't no, even that know. was the, that was the sticker from the last one. <laughs> so this will be probably about eighteen dollars. <laughs> maybe yeah, or maybe not. Just ask for Madoc. We've no idea. The store. That's yeah. All I know. Just ask for Gray Sack. Cheers. You got the store. <laughs> yeah. Cheers we'll see to you guys. that. I have great plans for I Know Jackson 2018. There are so many things I want to do and so much new stuff I want to add to the show. I just want more, more, more. How about you? Well, one thing I will be adding to the show is a craft beer news segment, and we're going to be working with our friends over at Really Good Beer Stop to make that happen. So look forward to that on the show soon. I just wanted to let you know that I'm now sending out The Insider every Tuesday. You'll get tips and ideas for cool things to do, plus you'll find out what I'm up to and where we're filming next, that kind of stuff. You can subscribe to The Insider on my website at iknowjacks.com. I often say that I have the best job in Jacksonville because I get to do so many different things and I get to meet a lot of fun people in the process. Now in our next story, I'm going on a quick road trip to Tampa. I found this really cool speakeasy that I immediately fell in love with. The decor, the atmosphere, but most importantly, the really amazing cocktails. Take a look. Now it's time for a visit to Ciro's, a prohibition themed restaurant with great cocktails. Heck, you even need a password to get into this South Tampa speakeasy. So uh, welcome to Ciro's guys. The first thing that we're gonna do today is a Martinez. Uh, it's a classic cocktail, uh, dates back to the 1870s. Okay. Uh, it's sort of the precursor to the martini, okay. as we know it in modern day. Um, so um, it's made with Old Tom Gin, which is a, a sweeter version of uh, London Dry. Uh, it's 
a little drier than uh, Geneva, so okay. it's been referred to as the missing link as far as Jen's concerned. Link. I like that. So, um, cool. first thing we're going to do is um, yeah, an ounce and a half of Old Tom Gin. So, tell me why you're making this. Tell me a little bit about the, the inspiration for Ciro's. When, when Ciro's first opened, it was supposed to be a return to classic cocktail techniques, um, kind of the return of the you know, the care and the finesse that it takes to build a proper cocktail. And, um, you know, a place that felt very nostalgic in doing so. And um, we want it to be a place where um, that felt otherworldly, sort of. It takes you it's back in time. It's kind of sexy here, too. It's cozy and dark with private hideaways. So gain entrance into our private dining room. Uh, at the pool, uh, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. So the key to um, diluting a cocktail is that you want to add just the proper amount of water without over diluting it. Um, you don't want to you don't want to shake any cocktail that does not have citrus because then you're doing what, you, what we refer to as bruising the liquor. And then we're going to finish this off with a, a nice lemon twist. Um, so the, the the oils from the lemon will give it a nice little, uh, sharpness to it. Okay. So an otherwise pretty rounded out cocktail. The smell of that. So what are we going to do next? Uh, so the next thing we'll do for you guys, we'll go ahead and do a uh, uh, our version of a Mai Tai. Okay. Um, we do a, a barrel aged Mai Tai here at Zero's. Barrel aged, that's cool. Yeah, it is very cool. So what we do is we... Sounds uh, like a lot of time is going into all these things, man. Yeah, it is. Um, so it's all not the, something you just <laughs> yeah, snap um, your fingers absolutely. and it's done. Um, there's definitely a lot of... Um, a lot that goes into a cocktail program that we that we uh, we take a lot of pride in. Um, so all the things that go into the mai tai, the orgeat, um, the demerara syrup, and stuff like that, we make in house. Um, all the syrups that we use here at Cereals for the cocktails we do make in house. Um, we age it for six weeks in American oak. Cool. Uh, we then remove it. We uh, we bottle it, and then we when we get one that we want to make, we right. just add the citrus to the shaker. Uh, a classic mai tai is going to consist of few things. Um, so one's going to be orgeat, which is an almond syrup. Right. Uh, so we make a milk out of it. We sweeten it with demerara syrup, which we also make in-house. Okay. I get some rose water, some orange blossom water. Uh, gets a little bit of macadamia nut liqueur. Right. Uh, a little bit of rum in there. It's very, very thick, very floral. Uh, right. It's excellent. Um, it's a key ingredient to making any real Mai Tai. I think of you guys like mad scientists because <laughs> you're putting so many things together. You must experiment a lot to get just that right mix. Um, we do. Um, certainly, the antithesis of a good cocktail is everything is in balance. So layering flavors, making sure everything's in balance is very much like creating a, a flawless dish in the kitchen. Uh, mm -hmm. It's all about layering flavors and you know putting things on the plate that belong, not necessarily just putting something in there just because it's it looks cool or sounds cool. Right. Definitely, everything has its purpose, everything has its place, so. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Uh, we're gonna give this a shake. So this was actually a candy dish that I found and I uh, thought it looked very cool, so I was like, <laughs> this would be perfect for Why my mind. right? That's awesome. Add some fresh ice to the top. Okay. And then, you know, the most important part of any obnoxious tiki cocktail is uh, <laughs> All the garnish. putting everything that you have in your bar <laughs> on top of it. That's beautiful. All right. There you have our Ciro's Barrel Age Mai Tai. Now, earlier I talked about the Facebook Live show we're doing from Atlantic Beach Brewing Company every Friday. In that show, we're doing a new fun segment about kitchen gadgets. My friend Jeffrey Spear is really the mastermind behind it all. He's found a whole bunch of fun and interesting gadgets for the kitchen. Now, some of it's really useful and stylish and all that stuff, but my favorite ones are just plain fun. <laughs> the plan is that Jeff is going to join us right here on the TV show as well really soon. That's just one of the new things we're doing at I Know Jack's. There's more coming, but I can't reveal everything all at once. <laughs> Next up is one of my favorite parts of the show. It's time for our trivia question. See if you can get it right. The answer comes after the break. Hey, this is Steve with Trivia Nation. It's time to get your think on. Today's question we're asking, in what year was Coca-Cola introduced? And we'll give you within 10 years either way. Again, our question was, what year was Coca-Cola introduced? We'll give you 10 years either way. 
Here at I Know Jacks, we do our best to support local businesses in the community. Visit our website to find out how we can help promote your business on iknowjacks.com. Call Joe directly at 904-345-0755 or visit iknowjacks.com forward slash advertising. Before the break, we asked you a question, what year was Coca-Cola introduced? And we'll give you 10 years either way on the answer. Nice work if you knew that that was 1886. How much do you love the weather we're having in sunny Florida? It's great, right? We actually sort of got a little bit of winter this year. Now, I'm not hating it at all. There's, of course, a lot going on in the River City, so here's what I found for upcoming events. We're celebrating a big birthday. Jacksonville's most historic public space, Hemming Park, is celebrating its 152nd birthday on January 23rd. There will be birthday cake at lunchtime and food trucks. Evan from Pi95 is going to be there. You may have seen his story right here on I Know Jack. The birthday party is taking place January 23rd at Hemming Park from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Speaking of winter and cold, how about ice hockey? The Jacksonville Icemen are going strong with two games this week. The first one on January 24th against the South Carolina Stingrays, and then again on the 26th against the Greenville Swamp Rabbits. Maybe the Icemen will be serving up Swamp Rabbit stew at the arena. Who knows? <laughs> you can watch all the hockey action at Veterans Memorial Arena. Now, speaking of fun and games, you might have heard about a little TV production on HBO called Game of Thrones. <laughs> Winter is coming. Yep, it's suitable for this time of year, especially if you watch the parody Musical Thrones at the Florida Theater. There will be singing and dancing, dragons, Lannisters, and Starks in this performance on January 24th. Today it's all about ice and winter, battles and dragons, but let's not forget about our own Giants. That is the Jacksonville Giants, our ABA basketball team. Their next game is against the Columbus Blackhawks and this takes place at Edward Waters College. Also don't forget that I'll be at Atlantic Beach Brewing Company on Friday, January 26th to do a new Facebook Live I Know Jack show. I'll be there from about 6.30 p.m. I'll be live online at 7 p.m. So if you can't make it out in person, make sure to check out my Facebook page and say hello. I'm going to try to keep up with all the comments online this time, so make sure to add yours. Now, if you can, come out to Atlantic Beach Brewing Company in person and join me and the gang for fun. For more ideas about fun things to do, check out my post on iknowjacks.com with the catchy name, fun things to do in January. That's it for this week's episode. I look forward to seeing you right here again next week. But until then, I'll see you on the internet. <laughs>